Welcome back everybody. Today I'm ranking pinball video games. That's right, a genre that I've never seen talked about online. I've never searched for it. I'm sure it exists. I thought it would be really fun to do this, especially because I've been playing some pinball video games recently. They're really fun before bed. Great way to just kind of spend 5-10 minutes and then you can go to sleep. And I've gone ahead in the last couple of weeks and I've played some other titles. So I grew up playing a good handful of them. And there's so many pinball video games that exist, actually. You could probably play them all in a month if you're dedicated. But there's more than what will appear in this list. The ones that I've gone ahead and filled in and played over the last couple of weeks are related to the games that I grew up playing. For example, I had Pokemon Pinball for the Game Boy Color. It was based on yellow version, I think. And so I've gone ahead and I've played the Ruby and Sapphire Pinball. I didn't go and play all other kinds of games. Uh, a few more things for the introduction here. There are no games like Kirby Tilt and Tumble, even though at first I was going to lump it in because I didn't know how many games I would have. It's a super monkey ball style of game where you tilt the game board either with control, actually you have to use gyro for that one, or motion controls. You tilt the game board and your ball moves along, but there's no flippers, right? So what actually qualifies for a pinball video game? Think of your standard console and then your flippers and it's really fast paced, it's not an adventure, it's not puzzle solving, although there could be puzzles nested within the pinball board. A couple other things is how the heck am I going to do this? You're going to hear me saying a lot of points for these games, a lot of similar points about precision and control. That's really what it comes down to, plus a little bit of originality. Anywho, I've been talking too much. Let's get through this uh, top 10 pinball games here, my recommendations for you. So at number 10 is Kirby's Pinball Land, and that is for the Game Boy. This game, the reason why it falls dead last for me, is just because it is too simplistic. Even though it has three pinball boards, and each board has three different screens, uh, a lot of them are just too simple, too bare bones, a couple of them are even too frustrating. So when it comes to exploring the rest of the pinball board, you might lose all of your lives before you get to see the whole thing. Uh, obviously with Game Boy, the precision and the tightness of the controls just isn't there. I'll get into more of that on the future titles, other games in this list. Really quick though, Kirby Pinball Land, not a terrible game. Anyone can go boot it up and play it for 5-10 minutes and have an alright time. But it's not the game you're going to be going back to. Number 9, Pac-Man Pinball Advance, also for the Game Boy Advance, obviously. <laughs> I really wanted to enjoy this one. It starts off with a cutscene, an introduction, and there's some story going on here. So, whoa, on the Game Boy Advance, you've got a pinball game with some story. That was pretty cool, but the gameplay is terrible. And uh, this is just a really random pet peeve, but I hate that the flippers sound like wood when you're hitting the ball with them. It doesn't have that really nice metal clang sound, so it just sounds dull. The events that appear in the game, like killing the ghosts and unlocking other areas. When you've played other games on this list, you're going to see that this is just the bare minimum for how it could feel and the kind of fun it could provide. So overall, there's some decent things implemented over here. But again, the precision, the flippers don't really allow you easy access or easy uh, precision for getting everywhere you want on the board. Let me explain this right now before I get to the other games. The longer the flipper, the more points that you have to flick the ball off of. If the programmers give you a very short flipper, obviously it's hard to aim your shot because where you place the ball in the flipper has to be very precise. Now you pair that with pretty archaic programming on the Game Boy Advance that doesn't even allow all of those millimeters of, uh, of different leeway and you just have a recipe for failure. So again, not a terrible game. None of these games are really terrible, but you have to play the games that are in the top five, not the bottom five. Number eight, Sonic Pinball Party. Again, for the Game Boy Advance, a lot of these games are. This one was just frustrating. It's a little bit too hard, and when you're trying to collect things on the board to unlock to the next areas, uh, it's just a lot of replaying and replaying and replaying and losing your progress when you lose a ball. Other games on this list, they maintain a lot of your progress towards a certain objective when you lose a ball, so you don't have to restart from scratch. Sonic, some of the objectives that you're collecting here, some of the things that you're gathering, that's not the case. And again, when it comes to precision, this game is just too wacky, too wonky. There's two game boards, the Knights game board, which is not even Sonic, right, but it's a Sega franchise. The Knights game board was a little bit more fun, but so repetitive. Uh, 
I played it for the sake of this video. I did not really enjoy it. Number seven, Mario Pinball Land. And now we have a game that's really trying to do something different. In this game, you're going across different screens at different areas. Very good, you know, Mario fanfare. I say that term so much, it's in my other videos. But the Mario fanfare is here, right? You've got the different enemies, you've got the different power-ups, the things that we've seen from the very beginning of the Mario franchise. But the, uh, the controls are the most frustrating part. Again, oh, actually this is unique to this game. When the ball is coming down the bottom of the screen, the bottom uh, little wedges of wood or whatever it is, the platforms before the, the flippers, it speeds up so quickly, like exponentially faster and faster. So it might start over here towards the very edge, and then by the time it's reaching your flipper, it is on and off in an instant. So you don't necessarily have a lot of time to aim your shots precisely. I don't understand why that physics is programmed in the game. Uh, like, I understand the ball, you know, you're meant to be playing on a screen that's tilted downwards, and of course the ball is going to pick up momentum as it comes towards you, but <laughs> why it is there at such an absurd strength and such an absurd uh, speed towards your flippers, I don't know. Kind of a cool game. I didn't beat it. I didn't get very far with my lives. I'm going to keep on playing that one because I want to see all the worlds that it has to offer. And usually, again, I don't rate games that I haven't played through or completed or beaten or whatever. But just from the very beginning with how it felt and how frustrating it is doing the objectives in this game, again, a lot of repetition, was not a fan. So not too high on my list. Number six, and this is actually a good game. Not as good as I remembered it, but it's still a good game. Pokemon Pinball for the Game Boy Color. I've talked about this one before when I went back to playing games from my childhood and this was an old favorite of mine, but it didn't hold up. The same is true uh, today or you know, at the making of this video. But it's really not bad compared to the games that are below it on this list. You have a variety of objectives and there is good replay value because you're just collecting the Pokemon in the Pokedex over and over and over again. That could be boring and monotonous and tedious for some of you. But if you like pinball games and you always need something new to do, then hey, that provides it. Not much to say about it. I'll cover the next Pokemon game later in this list. So we'll just leave it there. It's number six. Now for the top five. And here's one that a lot of us grew up with. I thought this was called Space Pinball or Space Cadet Pinball, whatever. This is Full Tilt Pinball. And this is for PC. We all had it on our early Windows computers. It holds up really well. They did a great job uh, designing and programming this game. The sound and music is pretty good, even though the music can get a little repetitive. I, for this video, played it in a web browser, so I don't think it um, performed as well as maybe the original version that we had as a standalone on our desktops. That said, it was still good enough when I replayed it to get in the top five. I like the different rails and everything. Really, the only thing this game suffers from is a variety of maps. And the games that are ahead of this in this uh, list, they have different maps to play on. So Full Tilt Pinball, hey, we grew up with a pretty good one. Next, number four, Sonic Spinball for the Genesis. And I think different versions of this game exist, or the same game, just on different consoles. I played the Genesis. This is a really good game. And now we see something different. You're not just playing as a ball, well, you are but Sonic can actually get out of his ball form and he can walk around the map provided you're on flat ground. Another really nice thing about this game is there are platforms between the flippers where you can save yourself. One really frustrating thing about this game, I'll mention its difficulty is higher than the other games on this list, very difficult game. The objectives like the previous Sonic game actually, which was actually released later, Okay, they just need to do a better job with the Sonic pinball games. Again, your progress towards the objectives is reset when you lose your ball. It's a terrible game design. You want players to continue with momentum and keep that thrill and that rush going. Don't have them reset their progress towards an objective just because they lose a ball. It's, it's just a terrible feeling. It makes you feel like you're wasting your time. It makes you want to put in a game GB code to go to level two. So a really hard game. There's a lot to do in the game. The sounds, I mean, Genesis sounds, everyone knows who's played a Genesis game, that <laughs> it's got one of the best sound chips in the world. So you're gonna be rocking along the levels and having a good time that way, but it is hard. That said, it controls pretty darn well, feels good when you're playing it. It's just watch out for those frustrating deaths. Game number three. Metroid Prime Pinball. And I had a really good time with this game. This is for the DS, by the way. 
I had a really good time with this game. I think when, no, before I got Leo, this is, uh, I've talked about a surgery. It was a little surgery the year before I had Leo. It's a little hernery, uh, hernia surgery. And I was playing a whole bunch of DS games at the time. Metroid Prime Pinball was one of them. And it really surprised me with how good it was. A lot to do with the game, a lot of objectives, different maps. It can be really difficult and sometimes too punishing in a random way when you're trying to get to the different maps or when you're playing the game mode that has you eventually seeing a final boss in this game. Yeah, there's a final boss. You're not going to see it in this footage, but that's a really pleasant surprise when you're playing a game like this. So it could be a little difficult that way, but just filling in the board for five high scores, for example, that's a lot of fun. You'll enjoy replaying it. Having multi-ball in this game is really good. The precision and the shots feel great, so you do have a lot of control over where you're aiming things. I can say a lot of good things about this game, uh, not too many negative things to say. You can see a lot of the action going on on screen. I will say, uh, playing it for footage on my computer was not the most enjoyable. I remember having a better time with it handheld in front of my face and between my thumbs. So maybe this is an, ex an instance of a DS game that feels better on original hardware. That said, if you want to boot it up on PC, you know how, uh, you'll still have a good time with it that way. Now, as I get into my final two games, I want to talk about a bonus game, an honorable mention. Uh, for many people, this could be number one. I just have to keep it separate because it is not a true pinball game, but it is a very pleasant surprise with how much fun it is. This is Yoku's Island Express, and I played it on PC. I have to wonder, did this game just get overlooked? I've got a moderately sized Steam friends list, uh, just people I know, not a lot of randoms, but I've got a decent Steam friends list and nobody on my friends list has this game. Usually for everything else in my library, I might find one more person who's wish listed a game or who has played a game before. Nobody has played this. And I wonder if they're confusing it with uh, Yuka and Laylee, I think it's called, uh, the game that's like a spir spiritual successor to Donkey Kong for the second game and uh, Banjo for the first game. If you guys know the title, you know what I'm talking about. Yoku's Island Express, sorry about that. <laughs> a little tangent there. Yoku's Island Express, completely different. Yes, it relies heavily on pinball mechanics, but I feel that at its core, it is an adventure game, a puzzle game, and the pinball mechanics and the platforming are the ways that you facilitate that adventure, the way that you progress through the game. So, you know, honorable re uh, mention here is probably the best that I could do because if you want just a classic pinball experience, you're gonna be wanting a faster pace, you're gonna be wanting the threat of danger of losing all of your lives, that doesn't really exist here. No, it doesn't at all, actually. Um, but it's such a fun game, it's such a cool game, it's a real surprise. But yeah, the pinball sections that appear in the game, they are more puzzle-ish. They are more like short platforming sections. A lot of replayability in that, so you might be on one board for, I'm calling it a board, you might be on one screen for about five minutes just collecting everything that there is there. It feels pretty darn precise. Uh, so no real complaints about this game other than it's not a true pinball experience at least not in the way that most of us understand that. Still, uh, basically tied for number one, an amazing honorable mention. Now, the true number one game in this list is Pokemon Pinball Ruby and Sapphire for the Game Boy Advance. This is one of the games that I started with for the making of this video. This is the game that I've gone back to play the most. This game feels the best. Uh, I'm obviously a little bit biased towards Pokemon and especially its generation because it was my favorite. But the precision, the accuracy, the power involved in your shots, the multitude of objectives, obviously the fact that there's so many Pokemon to catch in this game, a lot of replayability, different screens, different game modes. It's, this game has pretty much everything. If you want a pinball game, just one pinball game, and you're gonna be replaying it over and over and over, this is the one. To me, it feels the best, it looks great, that they made it work so seamlessly on one small screen with the scrolling uh, is a testament to <laughs> maybe the company being in their prime at the time. I actually don't know who developed it, but whoever developed it did a fantastic job on this game. So it deserves my full praise. It's got my 100% heartfelt recommendation. And that's pretty much it. There's a silly little list of my favorite pinball games, all the ones that I've played so far. 
will I play more and will there be a part two some point in the future? I don't know. These are the characters that I grew up loving, Kirby, Sonic, and the Pokemon Mario. So I'm not too inclined to play more games that are like the Full Tilt Pinball, the Space Cadet Pinball, but you never know. Anyway, that's it. Uh, thank you everybody for watching, as always. Hopefully after this video, you're gonna go, I was gonna say uh, the D word, the DL word. Go try to play these games, okay? You owe it to yourself to have a little break with some fun pinball action. Thanks again, bye for now.